All right, Sean, starting off with uh, God of Thunder, impeccably bred son of Var out of a Group 1 winning filly. And then, of course, um, the first time at uh, Trapiche. Um, what's your assessment of race one? Yeah, always um, uh, difficult on a tight course, Trapiche. Um, she's taken a long time to strengthen up and um, she probably will need the, the education and the, and the run, but having said that, she could be running on. Um, God of Thunder is a colt that's had a, had a wind up. He had, he had a run after that wind up, and then he had a, some soundness issues. He's a big guy on, on his best form. He could he could have a chance, but he might just need this one. You start the afternoon off with uh, what looks to be a talented sort in Walla. Yeah, Andy, she made a good debut. Uh, I thought it was a strong race. Uh, she looked green and looked like she wanted further. So 14.50 with a good draw, I think she's going to be very competitive. Yeah, Callan's comment, uh, he's a very honest little horse, Andy. I mean, he's a <laughs> three-fifths in a row. Um, this probably is right trip, I think. Uh, found a little bit of interference last time out, but, um, you know, it was still, it was a good run. Um, I, I think, once again, he'll be competitive. I don't know if he can win it, but I think from a decent draw, he's got a, he's got a lively chance. Um, Mr. Cuddles, well, he's a reserve, so if he gets in, he gets in and he'll be competitive if he does get a run. I suppose the same can apply to uh, Spiro Optima in race two. Also made a very nice debut, has come on plenty, will love the extra distance, so uh, hoping for a good performance. Okay, then on to Big Myth, um, listening to John Gosden, he says a filly reaches her maximum maturity, five at six, so there's plenty of racing left in her, and she's got good form with a great pedigree. Yeah, tricky ride, I'm not convinced that the inside course is her game, but... Um, yeah, she would have a chance there. Speaking to you off camera, Pigeon Rock, um, obviously his behavioural patterns need to be addressed, but he, he looks like he's got a chance. Yeah, he's got the right form, he's got a half-decent draw, and um, if, he, if he puts in his A game, he's, he's got a chance. A few weeks back, these two horses ran on the same day, Baron Rodney and Shippers, even though they had different races as they were then, and Baron Rodney came out victorious. Is he looking to follow up? Yeah, he's uh, just finished his uh, horse sickness vaccines, just out of the third week now. But he's remained pretty fit, and um, he looks very bright. His work this week has been very good. And, um, yeah, optimistic. You know, he's another one, breathing problems. Uh, that's why I own him. But uh, he, he's, a, he's a lovely little horse, and he's done well on the inside track before. I think in this race, probably more likely to place than win. You know, he, it's not that he's short of talent, but he's got a bit of a weight there. And uh, I, I think the field looks quite competitive. So I, I do give him a chance, but um, yeah, I'd probably be happy with a run in the first three if he can get there. And then you double-fisted with Spirit of the Groove, who's also got decent form, and the emphatic uh, maiden winner, Sidoni. There's a, a horse that's finished like 10 or 12 lengths behind her that's already run third. So the form doesn't look bad at all so far. Yes, um, you know, she was very impressive. It was a slow run, uh, slow run race. Um, doesn't make sense that they didn't take her on any earlier, but at the same time, uh, uh, yeah, it's a big step up. She's a maiden winner, and, you know, we, you would think that at these weights uh, she, she would have a chance in a race like this, but it's a big test. It's a big jump, and um, Spirit of the Groove, she's done nothing wrong. She's, she, she's a progressive filly. She's a tiny little thing. She gave me an excellent gallop in the week, and um, she's not out of it. And I'm sure you're glad to have Luke Ferraris aboard because there's not many guys that can do 51, not least of all with his talent. Yeah, um, obviously um, it is a bit on the light side for him, but uh, it should all be fine, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to have Luke on. Okay, then. I refuse point blank to believe that there's any possibility of Shippers' last run being her true ability. It's just not possible the way she finishes off her races. And I'm sure you're hoping for the real Shippers to show up on Saturday. Yeah, I must be honest, I, I'm still a little bit of, of, uh, at a loss. I, I really thought she would run well. Even, you know, she was <clears throat> drawn wide, 1,400 stand side track. But I, I still thought she'd be running at them and, and certainly, you know, get into the frame. Uh, it was a horrible run, and I'm uh, still at a little bit of a loss to explain it, but uh, everything seems fine with her. She's She's been working well this week at home, so, um, you know, no no worries in that department. Um, I'm just hoping, like I say, I'm hoping the real shippers turns up 
1450, is it too far? I, I personally don't think so with her style of running. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I've got to say, that all I think is that uh, in a competitive field, you've got to add her in with the other classy fillies. In Cascopedia, we know her so well in terms of her ability to come out fresh and um, that would appear to be the case again. Yeah, she would need a good pace though over this distance. She won the race last year, but they flew very early on and she made up the ground. She's, she's in a similar vein of form as to she was uh, at this time last year, prepping for the Summer Cup. So if she runs on positively, we'll be very happy. Okay, and then from one end of the spectrum to the other with a, a younger filly that's also got good form and laden with talenty, the, the daughter of soft falling rain, Jin Fizz. Yeah, she shows us exceptional work at home. Um, she's, I wouldn't say yet to bring it to the races, but maybe it's just been the lack of distance um, that we've been running her in. So hopefully the seven furlongs she's going to enjoy, I, you know, I'm, I really hope so because she's been slightly disappointing up until now. Um, it's a strong field, so let's hope she can do well. Put the lid on the day, you've got a pair of Sally Cauld and uh, Jatorio who represent you in the 8th of the afternoon. Yeah, Sally Cauld, nice improvement in her last start. Let's hope this is not coming too soon, but I think it is the right type of race for her. Um, Jatorio, inside course, you know, I always think is of a chopper, but it, if I remember correctly, she won first time out on the inside course. Um, it was a very good run in her last start. Um, I think she's going to need further, but she could just you know, be there where it matters in this race. Fantastic. Then, uh, Eberly Hobhouse, um, you were quietly optimistic of a decently forward type of run, which I'm sure she gave you, and I'm sure she'll strip a fitter horse and um, ready for the big uh, haul of the summer season. Yeah, I was happy with her last run, um, drawn wide, um, <laughs> which she's most of her runs have come from wide draws, uh, but she ran well. She was fifth running on strongly, uh, I think a little further she would have been, you know, probably in the first three. Uh, so it was a very pleasing run. A little bit soon to come back, two weeks break, you know, you, you give them three months off and then you've got to run sort of on top of each other, but the schedule is what it is and, uh, we, you know, we, we were there. But uh, I think a very competitive race, good fillies with big weight, so it's going to be, uh, I think it'll be difficult for them. I mean, Flickerty by far, we, we used to train her um, uh, for Alison Wright, uh, when she was up here for the Oaks and very very talented filly um, but she's not very big and to give us that kind of weight I think it'll be difficult for her um, so I'm, I'm quietly optimistic I think she's you know she's improved she likes the inside track um, we get the kilo and a half off with with Nathan so I'm I'm hopeful for her, Andy okay now Talking about course specialists, um, there can't be too many horses that are more effective over this trip, track and trip than Zouave, and his, his return was, was very impressive. He, he finished like a train. Oh, I must say, I was very, very pleased with that run. A big weight, uh, the two that um, dead heated in that race, I mean, they were only just about a length in front of him. Finishing well, he's as honest as the day is long and loves his track and trip, so... Um, from a good draw this time, um, I'm optimistic for him. It's a very, very competitive field, some very good horses in there. And I guess that nobody really gets on better with him than Marco van Rensburg. Yeah, Marco and Zwaas, well, he's a little horse and Marco's a little guy, and I think he fits nicely on his back. So, you know, once again, look, it's, it's uh, you know, more or less a wait for age contest, so it's not easy. But, uh, you know, in the Hawaii, he proved himself sort of up there with the best over seven furlongs and uh, uh, I'm just hoping that's uh, the, the key to it here that uh, he's pretty much a course and distance specialist and if he shows up which I expect him to then I think he's going to be a lively runner. Okay then after a whole string of very very impressive victories Buffalo Bill Cody stepped up to the big time I think it was a superb run I really do and he starts his campaign for the summer season. Yeah, it was a good run, and to be fair, I didn't feel like it was his best performance. He he didn't travel like he normally does in a race and hung out in the straights, and he only got beaten two lengths by Socrates and Rainbow Bridge, so that's top-class form. Um, he's done well with a little bit of freshening up. Looks great, you know. Um, tough draw, though. We're going to need a bit of luck from that draw, but he looks a class horse in the race. He's fitting well, and hopefully with a bit of luck, he'll be right there.
Having said that, um, I, mean, I think to be fair to Buffalo, I think it was his second run after a layoff against a horse that could easily have been horse of the year in Rainbow Bridge and Socrates a dual grade one winner, so he was anything but disgraced. Yeah, he, I mean there was a multitude of things or excuses we could have used. At the end of the day, he's uh, still a very lightly raced horse, so we, we wasn't our last run ever, so um, we're looking forward to the season ahead. What is his mission? Yeah, it's it's difficult to say. You know, we're hoping that he is that we're not making excuses for nothing, and that he is a Group One horse. Um, but for now, it will be Saturday's race, and then probably the Charity Mile. And if he goes well, then hopefully the Queen's Plate. At the bottom of the weights, uh, very much like Sean Terry has got a filly in the previous race. You've got uh, a San in race seven. Yeah, he's a nice horse. Um, this will be a good test for him. I'm not too sure where he stands uh, in ability-wise. But, you know, he's, he's, he's high in the ratings, so there's, there's not many options, and it's going to be a good test for him. Chimichurri run and put on the red light. Um, Chimichurri's form is absolutely faultless. At Gravel on the last day of the season behind the champion sprinter. Yeah, it was anything but a below par run, Andrew. He was uh, low flying late. I mean, there's nothing you can do when you're drawn in the bushes. Um, it was an excellent run. Uh, the jury's out over 14.50. It's very difficult, uh, Andrew, at the end of the day, with that rating, he's basically a wait-for-age horse. Are there any Group 1s uh, <laughs> in the near future? Over 1,200, definitely not. So, I mean, basically, his two races are, are in the Durban season, and then we have to just decide what sort of distance we're going to fiddle with, and um, that's maybe why I'm putting him in this race, just to have another look over anything further than the, the six furlong but um, you know your hands are tired you're limited we're gonna have to just box smartly put on the red light also didn't have any good fortune as far as the draw is concerned behind a very good field yes uh, once again it was a very slow run race um, um, you know it's uh, this was not his run at all he's got the draw here let's hope he could use the draw I mean um, he's a horse that's gonna want a mile and more and uh, this is definitely gonna be on the sharp side however if he gets a position early um, with that weight, he should make his presence felt.